In our next video series, we're talking about how habitat helps hunting, how the management work that we do all winter and spring helps us be more successful in the field during the fall. Mossy Oak Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place. We are in Virginia on Cody's piece of property that he calls Rock and Chair Ridge. Now right. Cody and his family have done a lot of work on this piece of property and that's what we're going to discuss today. Yeah, this is my pride and joy, this piece of property and we have done, as Eric mentioned, a lot of habitat mm -hmm. work on it, especially on this little section right now where we're going to center this, vote, this video around. Mm -hmm. We've done a lot of habitat management work. We've had it logged by loggers. We've done TSI work ourselves, a lot of chainsaw work. Eric and I have burned a couple of clear cuts that were successfully going to successfully <laughs> and safely ran fire through this and we've got a water hole right behind us and all the work that I do is for wildlife first mm -hmm. I'm thinking about white-tailed deer turkeys songbirds grouse every critter that calls this area of Virginia home yep. I'm thinking about what I can do for them from January 1st to December 31st mm -hmm. in the form of food stress-free environment mm -hmm. cover nesting opportunities for ground nesting birds, fawning cover, the gamut. I want to provide them with literally a white, a wildlife paradise. Mm -hmm. That is my goal with Rock and Chair Ridge. However, if I'm honest with myself, selfishly, a big part of the work that I do, and I'm sure yes. I know it is for you and a lot of you guys out there watching, we do this work so we can be more successful or enjoy better hunting opportunities during the fall. And that's what this video is going to be about. We're going to take a look at all the habitat work that we've done the clear cuts, the TSI, the burning, the water hole, how it benefits wildlife for sure, but also as we transition in from late summer and to bow season, yep. it's right around the corner, we're going to look at why we did, what we did, and how we did it so we can be more successful deer hunters this fall. Mm -hmm. Now, we always talk about diversity, and diversity, more diverse a piece of property is, the more attractive it will be to wildlife. Now, when it comes to hunting, you know, managing that diversity for to benefit wildlife as well as you is the key here. Right. But what is habitat? Habitat is food, cover, water, and the one that's forgotten a lot is space. Mm -hmm. And where we're standing, I see all four. Right. Yeah, we really tried to maximize this space and hit on every single one of those mm -hmm. elements that combine to make habitat. Behind us, we have a water hole that my dad and I built earlier this winter really really simply we just dug it out with a scraper blade a snow plow basically on the back of our 26 horsepower tractor you kind of have to pay we had to pay attention i mean we wanted some good runoff pay attention to slope look at where we thought it could hold water this soil holds water relatively well but we've had to add a lot of bentonite to the water hole so it could hold water but we did this in about a day's work so right here we have a water element which water is life and oftentimes on a piece of property it is the limiting resource you can put in food plots you can do tsi you can add cover but oftentimes you'll find if you can incorporate a natural water hole a vernal pool in your property that will be the most attractive spot on your property not just for the game animals you're going to hunt like deer turkeys bear whatever but all wildlife visit a water hole and it's really cool to see once you put a trail camera on it to see fawns playing in the water hole a great blue heron turkeys they'll get out in the water kind of bugging it's really cool to add this type of value to wildlife on your property but also come fall during hunting season especially as bucks start really covering ground working to look for does they're going to get hot and they're going to really be attracted to a water source like this now there's a couple things here gorgeous water hole cody created but how did you create this how can people go out there and create a water hole like this? It can be done a lot of different ways. You can do it honestly with hand tools. Yeah, <laughs> you got a lot of energy, can. ambition, and some elbow grease. You can, maybe not of this size, but you can scratch out a little water hole mm -hmm. with hand tools. My dad and I, like I said, we use a 25 horsepower tractor and a snow plow to dig all this out. And then as I mentioned, we lined it with bentonite, which is a naturally forming clay. You can get it yes. at your co-op. It was, I they think- They got Lowe's even, a Home Depot right. has it. Yep. 15 bucks, I think I paid for a 50 pound bag. And it's, it's naturally forming clay and an expensive expands when it's wet. Mm -hmm. So 50 pound bag, is, is once it gets wet and expands, it's going to cover a lot of surface area. So all that to say a little bit goes a long way. Yeah. So what else on top of the water hole do we have here? Yes, yeah, so we got water, which is often a limiting resource. Um, but we've also, we're going to incorporate a food plot for this fall as well. And what's cool or important to remember, I think, with food plots, as, as Eric and I have talked about it in previous videos, is they're supplemental or that they fill a void. And in this situation, this long, narrow food plot right here is what it'll be. It's not significant in acreage or size. 
And again, if I'm honest with myself, the reason this little area is going to be a food plot is to funnel deer traffic by a stand that we'll look at over there momentarily right by this water hole. And it's to concentrate deer and provide them everything they need in this space as we talked about. Food, water, cover, space. We're adding as much diversity as we can. And as we walk along, you'll see it's not very big at all. It doesn't have to be. And honestly, for what we're trying to accomplish, if it were much bigger, it would be kind of counterproductive. We want this food plot to kind of to concentrate deer and almost serve as a trail. And on each side, we've got thick, brushy cover from a logging operation over here. Thick, brushy cover slash treetops, early successional habitat behind Eric as well. And we're leaving that. It's great fawning cover. There's food, nesting cover for turkeys during the spring and summer but for the fall it works as a funnel so we'll put our food plot right here to funnel deer right through here right by the water hole and give us a great rifle shot with the tree stand right over my right shoulder so we're again just taking this space this whole little area that we're in is maybe six acres in size and we're adding a food plot we're adding a water hole and doing all we can to maximize it to help us be more successful during deer season. Yeah, just taking <clears throat> what you have. You yeah. know, they don't have to be this extravagant food plot to get the job done to attract the wildlife, especially white-tailed deer in this case, to a, a, a point of, you know, where you can intercept it, if you will. But on top of that, we always talk about food cover, water, space, but we cover water, we cover food. How about the cover aspect mm. of it? Yeah, and there's something Eric always talks about ever, as long as I've known him about early successional habitat and food that equals cover, cover that equals food. And that's what we're gonna take a look at now. And a little two acre clear cut. And as we're walking the food plot trail right now, water hole is right here. And then if you look over my shoulder, up in this direction is a two acre clear cut that we had done by loggers. This is its third growing season and Eric and I have burned it twice. So we're really trying to make the clear cut and manage it for a more old field type of environment where we can have food that equals cover and cover that equals food. Because a lot of times you'll have switchgrass, which may be good cover, so it does, but it doesn't have a food component. Behind us, we just discussed the food plot, which is an attractive, nutritious food source, but it's lacking cover. This clear cut slash old field behind us is cover that equals food, more pounds of food per acre than a food plot while providing a stress-free environment, security cover, because a big part of being successful during the fall, especially if you're hunting mature deer, is to do what you can to create a stress-free environment and encourage daylight movement where deer feel safe and secure when they have cover, when they have food close to cover, when they have cover that equals food, they're gonna be more likely to move during the daylight when you can have a, a shot opportunity. I don't even know what else to say on top of that, cause that's, yeah, pounds of food per acre, it's cover that equals food, it's everything that Cody said. Look what he has done on just a couple acres of land. Right. You know, what you can produce on your small acreage, cause not all of us have 50 acres and more. A lot of us are just buying our first piece of property that might be even 20 acres. Look what you can do. Yeah. Food, cover, water, space. And we mentioned space. Now we won't go out in, into the forest, if you will, and woods and, and, and look, but there is space. You do not want your whole property being just the stick nasty thing. Right. Add diversity to your piece of property. A state park looking woods in small increments is beneficial. Absolutely. Mass producing, et cetera, different types of wildlife as well. Yeah. Now we're standing in a very vulnerable position right now if you're a white-tailed deer. If we are white-tailed deer, this would not be a good spot for us to stop. <laughs> right. Because it's like an axis of evil here. Yeah. Water, cover, it's everything is right here. Now if we go just an X amount of yards away, Cody's gonna show us where the magic is hopefully gonna happen. Right, we're, you said it well, we're at the convergence of all our work, all of the habitat type, food plot behind Eric, clear cut old field behind me, nice water hole right here where they've got food in the food plot and in the clear cut they can stop here and get a drink they've got security cover all around them as a result of the clear cut and the old field management there's saplings there's briars brambles so we've done all we can to increase the likelihood the deer are going to spend time on this piece of property and as we transition this direction you can see over my left shoulder and why we did the work that we did 
right here is because of the tree stand right behind me. And from that tree stand to the water hole is about a 45 yard shot. We can put a ground blind close to the water hole and food plot for bow hunting opportunities. And it's important to remember as well to consider your access and also your wind direction when you're designing your property and with hunting in mind. Behind Eric is west. We're gonna hunt this with a southwest wind, a west wind or a northwest wind, which will keep everything in our face. Wind will blow right in our face over the back of that ridge. We can pop up behind the ridge into the stand, leave this whole area untouched so we're not disturbing it with any foot traffic, leaving any human scent. We'll hunt it with a good wind, wind in our face the whole time. That will help increase the likelihood that deer are going to use this during the daylight, keep it a stress-free environment. And you zoom out and look at the big picture. We've got habitat for wildlife in the form of food, water, cover, space. And then for us as sportsmen and hunters, we've got a great opportunity to not only be successful, it's not always about going hunting and putting meat in the freezer or harvesting an animal, but we can enjoy great hunts here. We can enjoy great wildlife encounters and experiences. Just watching does and fawns at the water hole or watching turkeys bug their way through the clear cut or watching you know, a young buck make a scrape in the food plot. There's a lot that we can do and enjoy and find value in from the work that we've done here. And if we're lucky and the stars align, maybe a big buck will cruise by our stand and give us a shot as well. One of the things we mentioned in all that is that doing what you can with what you have. Right. We didn't say that exactly, but we, <laughs> that's what we meant. Doing right. what you can with what you have. You know, you can do all this, whether it's on a large scale, same concept, or it's a small piece of property. Mm. Obviously, you know, you just, you put all the pieces, you have the pieces, you just have to manipulate it so it benefits wildlife as well as a hunting opportunity. Right, that's a really good point because a lot of what we have here, we kind of took what we had mm -hmm. and did our best with it. A lot of the slash that I mentioned was left over from the logger. We kind of, we couldn't do a lot with it. My dad and I don't have the equipment to push out a lot, of, grub up a lot of these stumps or push out all these tops. We, we use that to our advantage and we designed what we were hoping to accomplish around what we had. So that's a good point, as Eric mentioned, to evaluate what you got, your habitat type, what you have to work with, your goals, your equipment, and then manipulate and design accordingly. Yeah, and one thing in this series that we want to really pound home is that what is the definition of success in all this? Right. Cody mentions it all the time and I steal it from him and I bastardize it quite a, bit, quite a bit as well but the measure of success right you know we're so critical on you have 20 acres of property but yet you think you have a hundred no your measurement of success is of within you correct absolutely yeah how we measure success is entirely personal it's yeah. different for me than it is for you mm -hmm. just as whoever is out there watching it how we measure success is a personal metric and we for the hunting aspect of things if how I measure the work that we've done by box on the wall or meat in the freezer would honestly be a little bit disappointing. Yes. I mean, that's why we do what we do. I hope the biggest buck in the world comes by here for me, my dad, my brother, not necessarily him, but <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, and hopefully, you know, we'll put some meat in the freezer in the form of harvesting some does, but it, take that aside, we can enjoy wildlife as a result of the work that we've done. Being a successful hunter during the fall is just icing on the cake. Yeah, just know when that, when you create something such as what Cody has and his family, and when it does come together, no matter what size the animal is right. the, with the headgear, you know, buck wise, just know that you created that situation, that success. Masio Properties, where outdoorsmen find their favorite place.